Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this week's View on Africa. My name is Zachary Donenfeld. I'm a senior researcher with the African Futures and Innovation Program at the Institute for Security Studies here in Pretoria. And today we are going to talk about water scarcity in South Africa. Um, I'm going to go through, uh, this is just a brief overview of the presentation. I'll go through just a quick history, some of the modeling updates that we did um, for the project, uh, get into some of the findings, and then a brief uh, conversation around conclusion, and then we'll move into a discussion. Um, so history of the project, uh, A Delicate Balance is the third publication in a series from the African Futures Project. The African Futures Project is a collaboration between the Institute for Security Studies and the Frederick S. Pardee Center for International Futures at the University of Denver. And this is the second publication that we've done in collaboration with the Water Research Commission in South Africa. Over the course of the partnership with the Water Research Commission, we have improved uh, various aspects of the forecasting model that we use, the International Futures Tool, uh, which you can see here and which I'll explain a bit more uh, in a second. The, um, the improvements that we've made in the model are that we've enhanced uh, all three sectors of withdrawal, so municipal, agricultural, and industrial. We've also connected supply and demand so that uh, demand is constrained by available renewable supply over time. Now, for all of these publications, we've used the International Futures Forecasting Tool. Um, IFS is a tool uh, for three primary avenues of analysis. Uh, it's a massive database. It has over 4,000 variables for 186 countries going back to 1960 where data are available. So it allows us to explore historical trends um, and get a better sense of how a country or a region got to where it is today. Uh, it's also an integrated assessment model, so it combines data across key development systems of demographics, agriculture, the environment, energy, education, health, governance, and now water, which is part of the uh, environmental sub-module. So this helps us get a better understanding of how human, social, and uh, natural or environmental systems interact and unfold over time. And there's also a scenario development component. This allows us to explore alternative futures. So uh, what are we interested in today? We're interested in talking about water scarcity in South Africa. So how do we achieve this uh, based on our analysis? Um, in addition to a lot of other uh, good stuff in the report, we present a closing the gap scenario. So this represents a combination of interventions that allow supply and demand to be reconciled in uh, South Africa's water sector by about 2020. Uh, that being said, the supply and demand kind of straddle an equilibrium in our forecast for about 10 years. So the... the, the um, you know, the equilibrium that we achieve still leaves uh, the country very vulnerable to, to drought over that, that interim period. Um, so it can kind of be, uh, it might, it might be useful to think of the interventions as kind of supply side interventions and demand side interventions. Um, so on the supply side, we have all the existing projects planned by the Department of Water and Sanitation as per their publicly available reconciliation strategies. Our forecast does assume that all of these plans are met on time and to specification. Um, we also have an increase in treated wastewater and an increase in the use of available groundwater. Um, and we also have an assumed reduction in demand. What you're looking at here is the closing the gap scenario. So this is both uh, demand forecasts in the solid lines. Um, when I say both, uh, this uh, constrained scenario uh, in the green line represents the forecast from the model with these uh, equilibrating dynamics. So this is a future where water, uh, water use and economic development are both constrained by water availability. Um, this uh, red line is a kind of unconstrained scenario. This represents a future where water use continues um, in, a, in a similar, uh, at a similar level of consumption at, as to which uh, is going on in the country right now. 
the dashed lines represent our various, our, our two supply forecasts. So total supply is the current path or the uh, expected supply with all of the available reconciliation strategies. The closing the gap scenario represents an increase in available supply of about one cubic kilometer. Now, this increase is achieved primarily through uh, increasing the amount of wastewater that is treated and reused in South Africa by about 0.7 cubic kilometers and increasing the amount of groundwater that's used, particularly in the agricultural sector, by about 0.3 cubic kilometers by 2035. On the demand side, like I said, we have an assumed reduction of about 1.2 cubic kilometers from uh, 2035 levels from the previous forecast. Um, this represents about a 7% decrease in in use in the country relative to that forecast. So this assumes that water use across the board gets about 7% more efficient now. How do we achieve this, right? Is this a reasonable forecast? Is this a reasonable expectation of what South Africa could achieve? So we looked uh, at some examples from around the world, um, and there are some uh, countries that have experienced water scarcity, uh, that have implemented solutions and restored balance to their water sector over time. So. What are some major issues in South Africa? Um, per capita use is relatively high comparison to the global average. Um, there's a lot of dispute around the actual numbers and there's a lot of ways to kind of get at that. There seems to be a relative consensus, however, that per capita use is relatively high and annual rainfall is relatively low. So in a country with low rainfall, and high demand, it makes sense to look for ways to reduce overall consumption. Uh, there are also high levels of non-revenue water in South Africa. Um, in our uh, in the release of the paper about two weeks ago, um, we found out that the level of non-revenue water is not about 36% of the figure that we use in the report, but is actually more like 41%. In other water scarce countries, like Australia, for example, non revenue water is about 10% of municipal uh, withdrawals. So, if South Africa were able to move towards that 10% target or benchmark, that would represent uh, a significant. Uh, a significant portion of the demand reduction or this uh, the difference between the red and green lines, as you see here in terms of. Uh, how, in terms of some other financial incentives that the South African government could use to uh, discourage more intensive water use are things like more aggressive tiered pricing. Uh, a lot of municipalities already experiment with tiered pricing, um, but it's clearly not uh, steep enough or the, um, you know, the increments aren't aggressive enough to effectively discourage consumption. Uh, there could also be tax rebates for buying water efficient appliances, new building codes, a host of other incentives to encourage a culture of conservation around water use in South Africa. Now, on the supply side, in terms of examples from around the world, uh, South Africa treats about 50% of its wastewater. In other water scarce countries like Israel, that figure is closer to 90%. Um, if South Africa were, again, able to move towards that 90% target, it would easily be able to add about 0.72 cubic kilometers, which is the addition to supply in this closing the gap scenario. And finally, uh, uh, a more intensive use of groundwater in the agricultural sector is likely possible given estimates from the Department of Water and Sanitation. Now groundwater is an incredibly uh, delicate resource that needs to be managed carefully, um, but there is likely some potential for additional use in South Africa. So in conclusion, uh, Water scarcity is already directly impacting human and economic development in the country. Uh, the 2015 drought had a very uh, 
you know, very tangible impact on the agricultural sector, both in terms of, you know, overall production, but also in terms of its effect on the agricultural labor force. The indirect effects of this may not be visible for some time, and this could include things like an increase in childhood malnutrition or uh, a difficulty in the ability to access sufficient calories. A big takeaway from our report, though, is that there is a path to a more water secure future in South Africa, but it requires immediate action. And there are examples to draw from and available affordable technologies that can help solve this problem. So, you know, across the board, South Africa must use water more responsibly. Now, this uh, this can come in the form of investments in bulk infrastructure from the national government, but it also is incumbent on municipalities to creatively find ways to reduce demand and on all residents in South Africa to become more conscious about their water use on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, there also needs to be improved wastewater treatment and an increase in the amount of groundwater used for agriculture. And finally, the Department of Water and Sanitation has to meet all of the planned deadlines for all of the infrastructure uh, projects in the reconciliation strategies. And as a kind of a final note, I just think I would like to add that there also needs to be more and better publicly available information on water use in South Africa. As we all know, the blue and green drop reports stopped being published. Um, those I hear are, or I understand will once again be published, but uh, this, you know, this lack of conversation between government, civil society, and citizens has really led to a lot of misunderstanding about water use in the country. So I think more publicly available information would help raise awareness and create this kind of culture of conversation uh, that we're talking about.